Finally, on the Middle East, you suggested it would reflect badly on the Prime Minister if he doesn't visit Israel. Is there a chance, though, that it could, he could just get in the way? Like uh, when Netanyahu is trying to carry out this war with Gaza, uh, if you get the President Biden or other senior world leaders, maybe it has an impact, a show of support. But the Australian Prime Minister, do you think that carries as much weight? Look, only if you agree that Joe Biden, Rishi Sinak, uh, Olaf Scholz, the Italian Prime Minister, Ursula von der Leyen, they're all, they all got in the way. I mean, they've shown great solidarity with Israel, as I think we should too. And if the Prime Minister can't go, well, then the Foreign Minister should go. Some senior Australian government representative should go because we have interests and equities and values which are at stake here and we are not being heard on the ground and it's astonishing that the Prime Minister still hasn't spoken to Benjamin Netanyahu. And uh, we've just seen Macron arrive in Israel too as we've been on air this afternoon. Uh, but before you go, you've been in Senate estimates. I have noticed this story that's emerged about Hong Kong mm -hmm. police officers being trained in Australian facilities. Are mm -hmm. you concerned about that or is, again, that dialogue good between our security agencies? I am concerned about this because when I asked the AFP about this in Senate estimates last night, they didn't appear to know anything about it. So if we're going to be doing this, I'd really hope that the senior leadership of the AFP is well across it and knows what they're doing. They didn't appear to be. They also said they believed that part of the visit related to cyber security. Now, it would be deeply ironic if the number one state-sponsored source of cyber attacks on Australia was coming to Australia to train on cyber security or cooperate on cyber security. Senator Patterson, appreciate your time. Thank you.